Hey there, it is Sam, and um, I have a big problem, and today it's something I think that you should know about. So, first of all, thank you to all my recent subscribers on YouTube. It's really awesome to see, um, like, my family growing in size, so it makes me really happy that whether you came here for the music, or you came here for the vlogs, or you came here for my amazing humor, <laughs> or you came here um, to learn a little bit more about engineering, um, it's all here. Don't forget the writing. If you came here because you found Words to the Power, thank you so much. I'm really happy to get to have this platform to be able to talk with you like this. I feel like I'm actually like, I've never done a sit down talk before like this, but I'm fulfilling my hint, which was in vlog two, that's four, vlog two, um, of doing a hashtag Sam Talks video. This is finally that. So I feel like sitting down and talking to a camera, I actually feel like a real YouTuber now, huh? <laughs> so, that's fun. I want to show you a quick clip, real quick, go. I hate you, I love you, I hate that I love you, don't want to, but I can't put nobody else above you. I was playing that song, uh, like the other day, on my porch, on my own porch, and some dude from like the porch above me was like, Yo, shut the up. <laughs> I was like, really? Really? That was from one of my recent Instagram stories. So I'm showing you that because I want to let you know that even though you may be skilled at what you're doing and it's fun and you're passionate about it, there's always going to be someone that's like bumping against that dream. But you don't need their permission to keep going. So just keep doing it. Like, I, I, I we got a noise complaint recently. And I'm pretty sure it was from him too but you just keep moving forward. I've been told worse things about my singing and um, I just don't let that affect me anymore uh, like it did before. I'm not saying I'm perfect, I'm saying like we're all in this together and so we all can be pushing forward to the place we want to be in our uh, career, in our fun things like passions and in our education, whatever you have going if you're putting your all into that, there's nothing else anybody should ever be able to say that can deter you from accomplishing what you want to accomplish. Man, I'm on fire! So, the one awesome thing that has happened in my life in the last seven days is that I got to start summer school. So, I'm at the point in my college where uh, there I've already taken all my calculus that I need to, I've already taken all the physics I need to, and the fundamental courses and now we start getting to the advanced courses which is really fun because so far we've had like example problems where we'd say you know the satellite is some distance away from the earth calculate the acceleration and things like that so it's very specific to certain scenarios but this is the first class aerodynamics one that uh, actually concentrates on one phenomenon and that's Aerodynamics 1, we're studying airfoils, it's really cool. How summer schedule works is kind of, you take the 11 weeks of learning that you would have, at least at my school, and you crunch it down to, to like five and a half weeks and hope for the best. There's this problem that I had for homework and it was so hard, but it was really cool because it's one of those problems that like takes in a lot of different parts of math and science and compacts it, um, and application and compacts it into one problem and it takes hours, but it's so fun. And so this is gonna be a really interesting video. I'm gonna show you exactly like how I went about solving that problem and, it, and I got the right answer, of course, <laughs> or else I wouldn't do this video. Um, I'm gonna take you through it and it's gonna be a couple minutes, but it's gonna be really fun. It's a really cool way that I can share like what's going on in my life. Cause there's, you know, I, everything I do is for like more than one reason. Um, so this is going to be fun, it's going to be able to have me share uh, my life with you. It's going to be another YouTube video, 
and sometimes I want to share problems with like my family and so having it on video is really cool because I can like go through it um, in more detail instead of just on the phone so this is gonna be fun so let me read that problem consider a specific airfoil the following is a tabulation of the lift drag and moment coefficients about the quarter cord for this airfoil as a function of angle attack. I'm going to show you the picture of the table now. The first column is the angle of attack. The second column is the lift coefficient. The third column is the coefficient of drag. And the fourth column is the moment coefficient at uh, one fourth cord length. And what we have to do is, from this table, plot on graph paper, I did it in Excel, the variation of the distance of center of pressure divided by C, chord length, as a function of alpha. So, let's science. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I said it took hours, which is true. Hours when you've never done it before, and you're working through the equations for the first time, but now that I know how to do it, it's going to just take a couple minutes, so to science. Hey there. My name is Jeff. Just kidding. It is Sam. So I totally tried to get uh, Morgan Freeman to do this, but uh, I guess he was busy. Aerodynamics. Yeah, yeah. We are going to have so much fun. Can I get an amen? Okay, then. Moving on. <laughs> we need the distance of the center of pressure, XCP over C, which is chord, as a function of alpha, which is angle of attack. When you divide any unit by unit, it's one, so XCP over C is actually a non-dimensionalized unit, which makes it easier to work with. So I'm gonna have a drawing of this air airfoil, which is a wing, like looking inward, and we're gonna draw that through there. And so this first distance is the distance XCP from the leading edge to the center of pressure. The second distance is the distance from the front to the back, or the leading edge to the trailing edge, and that's chord. And that V is the velocity of the airflow, or free stream, and it's hitting the airfoil at an angle alpha. So we draw everything out to find relationships between everything. We already have X, C, P, C, and alpha. What I just drew is the drag and lift vectors at the center of pressure. And here's the drag vector at one fourth chord length with that distance I just drew and the lift at one fourth chord length. They have that prime over it or that apostrophe or prime because they are forces per unit span. So like force divided by length, which is just like a load intensity. There's M positive. Here I'm establishing a convention for positive moment or torque, which is going to be anything that causes the wing to pitch up. Thus clockwise rotation is positive. So moment prime c divided by 4, uh, that's the moment around the 1 fourth chord length and a moment is the force times distance. And you have m prime le right there which there exists a moment around the leading edge as well. And by geometry we're going to draw this perpendicular dotted line so that we can see where alpha is. So now we're going to devise a relationship between all the things. So if you notice by geometry, you got m prime le, which is moment of the leading edge per unit span, is going to be equal to negative l prime times x of cp times cosine of alpha minus d prime times x of cp times sine of that angle alpha and this is the sum of the moments at the center of pressure and that's going to be equal to negative L prime times the one-fourth chord length times cosine of the angle of attack alpha plus that moment prime at the one-fourth chord length which we drew minus D prime of times the chord length times four times sign of that alpha. Good job for keeping up, everyone. So I'm just gonna rewrite that equation up at the top. Remember, everything's equal. I just left out the M prime LE because we no longer need it. That uh, value we, did, we, we don't need it. All right, here's some um, equations we need. The coefficient of the moment about the leading edge is equal to M prime LE divided by the dynamic pressure Q times 
C squared, which is the chord length squared, and also because of that, uh, the coefficient of the moment about one fourth chord length, or called quarter chord length, is um, equal to m prime c divided by four times the dynamic pressure times the chord squared. Also, um, the coefficient of a lift is equal to l prime divided by q c, and the coefficient of drag is equal to d prime divided by q c. And um, these are important because these are in non-dimensional units, just like x c p over c was. So let's just divide that entire equation up there by q times c squared, because if you notice c l, c d, and c m of the quarter chord length were all given in our original tabulation table. So if you divide that whole equation by q times c squared, well, we're going to get those, which means we can substitute the values. Um, so with the first term, l prime, etc., we're dividing them by q times c times c, which is c squared. And in brackets, I'm showing you that so we can just sub what is equal to it, which is negative cl times xcp divided by c times cosine alpha. So with the second term, we're doing the same exact thing d prime, etc. We're dividing them by q times c squared. So now I'm just rearranging the terms, or rearranging the values. So you can see that relationship or that equality again. The d prime divided by q over c is equal to the coefficient of drag. So we're just going to substitute that value. cd times x of cp divided by c times sine alpha. And now we'll do the same thing to the terms on the other side of the equation. And we're going to do that super quickly. I feel like this is a Draw My Life YouTube video. Are, um, are those still like things? Because if it's still a thing, let me know if you want me to do one in the comment section below. I'll be chilling there. Um, okay, so I'm squiggly underlining all the important equations that we came up with. And we had that one really long equation, but we're just going to rewrite it in the new form because we remember we divided everything by q times c squared. Here we go. I notice something really cool. We have x of cp divided by c right there and there, and that's what we have been looking for the whole time. So we're going to just factor that out of both terms on the left hand side. And if you want to see if that works, all you have to do is redistribute it. So it's uh, x of cp divided by c times <laughs> negative cl times cosine alpha minus cd times sine alpha, which is all equal to everything on the right-hand side of the equation, those three terms. They go inside that parenthesis. And now we have x of cp divided by c times all that stuff inside the parentheses. So since it's times that, we can divide that out onto the right hand side of the equation and now we have our final equation that we've been looking for that's x of cp over c as a function of alpha all the alphas are on the right x of cp and c is on the left and what i'm writing out is all the values that were given to us in the first row of that tabulation table so all we need to do now is sub all those math numbers into the equation for their corresponding values and you're going to get a real number out of this equation. And it is 1.09404 Yes, so this will actually go into the first row, fifth column. And you have to do this for each row from here on out, but now it might be better to use something like Microsoft Excel. So I made the table we were given in Excel, and I color-coded the corresponding columns, and I wrote up that equation we did by hand into each of these uh, rows and columns so that uh, we could calculate the value for each of the uh, values that were given. And we got this awesome graph, which is the same as the graph on the right, which is like the answer. You notice it's exactly the same. And for verification, I'm going to show you the table I made of the calculated values in the table of the answers. So that's awesome. Thank you for watching The Science. So that was cool, right? Uh, quick story time. I think one of the reasons that I love this class so far so much, even though it's really hard, 
is that before I could even talk, I was really uh, artistic, uh, still am, even though I do talk. So what I would do is my first kind of like artistic endeavor was drawing. And when I was like one or two, all I would do is like draw and I would draw, I would pro draw probably like the normal things. But one of the things I drew that like I don't think happens a lot is that I would draw jets. Like I was fascinated with them. Um, my favorite jet at the time was F-16. Right now it's my second favorite jet of all time. Um, there's many reasons for that. It looks cool, but also the science behind it and the fly-by-wire and the um, lift ratio, all that stuff is really cool. They actually designed the F-16 to be aerodynamically unstable, and then they used the fly-by-wire as the correction factor, and that's what made it so maneuverable. And so yeah, things like that really drew me to the F-16. I mean, maybe not at one, but as I kept going through life, and that's why, it's a big reason why I'm in engineering. So, yes, this has been a big part of my life in the last two years. I'm really happy that I started vlogging recently because I can bring you along with me, and we can all have fun together and learn together. If you have any questions about engineering, like, ask them. I'm going to put all the links to where you can connect with me in the YouTube description. Also, if you have any questions about music or writing, you know, engineering music or, and writing are the things that my life is composed of, so feel free to reach out to me. I love, like, meeting new people in person and also on the interwebs, so I'm really looking forward to hearing from you. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing because we have a lot of fun here around music, engineering, and writing. I'm just like happy that this like music, engineering, and writing journey is continuing as it is. It's fun to have you along, so thanks for getting here. Don't forget, you are the best and music can change people for good. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.